Hi everyone, my name is Rachel. I'm the supervisor of ectotherms here at Naples Zoo. Today I'm hanging out with Cloudy, one of my favorite snakes. He's a Florida pine snake. And we're gonna talk about a topic that we hear about pretty often, and that is how do you tell a venomous versus a non-venomous snake? Now we hear a lot of different ideas and characteristics that could be used to determine if a snake is venomous or not. This becomes especially important in places like Florida and Southwest Florida, where we do have over 40 species of native snake. But out of those, only six of them are venomous. And in our area, we actually only have four species. Well, the first thing we hear pretty often is use the shape of the head. If the shape of the head is triangular, then it's a venomous snake. If it's not triangular, then it's non-venomous. Well, that often does work. Now this is going to work for many of our venomous snakes that are not the coral snake. Coral snakes are actually in a separate family than the rest of our vipers. So because of that, they're not really going to apply to any of these rules. But the reason we hear that about the triangular shaped head is because vipers do have very chunky venom glands. Um, these venom glands and muscles associated with them are kind of right behind their eyes and on the side of their head. So that does give them a bigger triangular shaped appearance. However, any animal, if it feels threatened, has certain things it can do to try to seem more intimidating to potential predators. And one of the things snakes will do if they're threatened is kind of smush their heads. They often, some species will fan the skin out around their neck and try to make themselves look bigger. So in doing that, often it does look triangular. I've seen many different water snakes and rat snakes really flatten the skin out around their head and their jaw bones can make it look pretty triangular if you're just taking a quick glance at them. Now the other thing that we hear has to do with the shape of their pupil. So we'll hear if it's a round pupil, just like ours, then it's non-venomous. And if it is elliptical or kind of like a cat eye where it's more like a slit, then it's venomous. Well, the really big problem I have with that one is if you're trying to determine if a snake is dangerous or not, you probably should stay far away from its face. And that's true of any wild animal. If you're trying to determine if somebody's potentially dangerous, you don't wanna be right up looking at their eyeball shape. Even cloudy here, which we're pretty close to, it's probably unlikely that you can see what the shape of Cloudy's pupils are at this point. So while that one can be true for a lot of the vipers as well, it's not really the best characteristic for us to use for any wild snake you may encounter. And that has a lot more to do with the snake's lifestyle. So for pythons, you'll see that they do have that kind of cat eye, cat pupil shape and that's because of their hunting techniques. So you'll see a lot of non-venomous snakes that have that pupil as well. So instead of using just one sort of tip or trick in order to be able to tell if a snake you see in the wild is venomous or not, I like to say, learn the ones in your area. And I know a lot of times that's not people's favorite thing to hear. However, we only have four in Southwest Florida. We have the coral snake, we have the eastern diamondback rattlesnake, the pygmy rattlesnake, and we have the cottonmouth, also often called the water moccasin. So if you learn some of the characteristics of those animals, then it can be a bit helpful when you do run into a snake in the wild. So for eastern diamondbacks, they do have really large um, kind of stocky bodies and they do have diamond shaped pattern along their back. Now they're not the only snake that has pattern down the back, but it can be pretty distinctive. They also have a very large rattle and they will often rattle when somebody approaches them in order to keep themselves safe from large predators. Our other snakes in this area um, that we often do see are the pygmy rattlesnakes. Pygmy rattlesnakes are one of the smaller species of rattlesnake and because of that you can barely even hear their rattle. So 
pygmy rattlesnakes, you can look at the dark blotches that go down their back, um, but they do look similar to other snakes. And that is why I also recommend um, looking at a field guide. So we've got lots of different really good field guides to help distinguish some of those characteristics that can be a little bit harder to tell with the smaller snakes. Another venomous snake in our area is the eastern coral snake. Now these are the really brightly banded ones that you've probably seen of or heard of before. And they have red, yellow, and black markings down their body. And there's always a rhyme associated with them, which people do often forget. It's red touch yellow, kill a fellow, red touch black, friend of Jack. And what that means is if the red and the black bands are touching, then it is a non-venomous snake. We've got a couple other species of those in our area that are not coral snakes. And if the red and yellow are touching, then it is a venomous coral snake. Now this only works for the coral snakes here in the United States, not in the Americas, a little bit south of us. Um, but a lot of times people do forget which color is which. I like to think about it like the caution colors. If red and yellow, those caution colors are touching, then that's a warning to make sure that you do give that snake lots of distance. And finally, for our area, we have the one that has probably the worst reputation out of all of these, and that is the cottonmouth. Cottonmouths live near the water. We have a lot of other species of water snakes that do as well. And they do have really similar camouflage and really similar patterns to those other snakes because that's what works living near the water. You'll see really a lot of that same pattern repeated over and over because those are the animals that can survive near those aquatic habitats. So I've seen lots of pictures that people have showed me of look at this cottonmouth and it's just a non-venomous banded water snake. So like I said, those patterns can be similar, but cottonmouths do have a really striking band on their face, from the front of their face, back towards their venom gland, that can be very easily spotted even from a far away distance. Um, so that's what I generally recommend if people have a photo of a snake that they've taken, is to look for that band. But even having some of these characteristics that you could look for in different patterns and you know markings that I've mentioned here today, often when you see a snake in the wild, that's a really surprising experience. It might cause a little bit of nervousness or even fear. And so sometimes those things that you may have read about or heard of before, often it's easy for those just to leave your head um, and leave you wondering if that is a venomous snake. And that's why it's most important for us just to leave any snake that we find out in the wild alone. Give it lots of space and respect. And in doing so, we can keep ourselves safe and we can also help protect those animals. Because even snakes, including the venomous snakes, do play a really important role in our ecosystem and we want to keep them around. So the best thing to do anytime you see a wild animal or a snake in your area give that animal some space, take a nice photo, and then maybe use a book to try to identify it later. Thank you guys so much for joining us to talk a little bit about the venomous snakes in our area and meet a couple of the snakes at our zoo. And we hope you have a great day.